spelled his name correctly. <laughs> Andre Miller. Thank you, Bernard. Uh You know, it's funny you bring up Cuba. Because, uh, you know, in Cuba, I don't know if you remember this, I'm sure you will, I'm going to tell this story, but in 2005, uh, I ended up one stolen base shy of tying the record with Adam Nicola. And Andre had a lot of second most records in the world. <laughs> and it's because of Pintar. So I'm, I'm going to go scale third base, and you know, I take off. I got the bag by about five feet. You know, I slide in five seconds ahead of the tag, and the umpire calls me out. And you know my intensity. You know, my love for the game, I just want to tear into them. But I know I don't want to get kicked out of the game. I mean, we're in Cuba. We're playing the junior national team. I mean, junior national in Cuba, these guys can be the national team. I mean, these guys are unbelievable. And Pinner comes sprinting out of the dugout. I don't know if you've ever seen Pinner sprint out of the dugout. He's on a mission when he sprints out of the dugout. So Pinner gets out there, and we're in Cuba. So you, you can't speak English and get through to the umpire. Now, I know deep down inside that I speak Spanish a little bit better than Pinner. He'll, he'll say otherwise. So I step back, and I let him take control of the situation. Well, that didn't quite work out. You know, Pinner is... You know, I won't go there, but... We both stayed in the game. I didn't get the bag. And at the end of the year, when it's all said and done, I'm one bag short of tying the record, two bags short of, you know, being the all-time single-season stolen base king for us in history. But Pinner, I'll hold that one to you. We'll talk about that one later. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know, I got this call from Pinner, and usually when you look at your phone and you see Pinner's calling, number one, you better find somewhere to sit down. <laughs> you know? And number two, if you're having a bad day, well, that's going to turn around pretty quickly. You know, and, you know, Pinnard calls, and I, I see he's calling, and, you know, I pick up the phone, and, hey, what's going on, Pinnard? He says, hey, D-Mill. He says, uh, you know, you're sitting down, and, uh, you know, yeah. He says, well, guess what? What's going on? Bought me a new car? <laughs> now he goes, you're going to be a Hall of Famer. I said, really? I'm going to be a Forrester Hall of Famer? I said, Penner, I know my hairline is receding, but I don't have any gray hair. He goes, well, fine then. I'll just take you out. You won't be a Hall of Famer. <laughs> well, I, I quickly changed my mind on that one. And, uh, you know, it's... It's unbelievable. Um, I mean, what an honor to be able to be inducted into this elite group with, you know, the Ryan Churches of the world and Eric Pintar, Chris Caper, Bon Wyth, uh, James Shields, Chris Messier, you know, Ryan Skillboard. I mean, to join the, this group of guys, you know, to carry on the tradition that they you know, initiated here with the Foresters and with the community. Um, there's no better feeling. And uh, I thank you all. Thank the Board of Directors. Um, I know most of you probably know of me or know a little bit about me, but some of you who do not, I'll tell you a little bit about myself and where I'm from. Um, I'm from Northern California and, uh, you know, grew up in Berkeley. Small town to some, to some big town. Uh, and I played on this field that had no grass. You know, those dirt infields, you know, these days they don't have those, but, you know, all dirt, you know, big rocks. And, uh, you know, my head coach didn't want to put me at the position. I, I was, you know, destined to play. So I had to, you know, I was a versatile guy. I had to play third base, the hot corner. I had to play up the middle. You know, I could catch, I could do it all. And, uh, you know, it's it's all it's it all comes to you know my father. And would you stand, please? I just want to let everybody Aww. see your shiny head. Yeah, yeah, Herbie. You know, my dad. He, uh, you know, 
know, he's in the military for a little bit, and, uh, you know, it, it really, he really instilled a lot of discipline in me from day one. I mean, I really, I really wanted to make him proud because I knew that a bad day was, was 20 push-ups before I could eat dinner, you know? You know, he, he was tough. I mean, he wanted me to get better, and he wanted me to put in the work. I mean, he's a drill sergeant. You know, and for many, many years, I wonder, why is he so hard on me? Or, why didn't he give me a break here? Or, why doesn't he give me a break here? You know, and, and now I look back, and, I'm, and I know why. You know, he's, he wanted the best for me. He knew I had it in me to succeed, not only at the game of baseball, but in life. And, uh, you know, from my grandfather, his father, and my whole family, uh, you know, he wanted me to hold that last name, that Miller last name, in the right way. And, uh, you know, I, he thinks, he thinks uh, you know, I let things go in one ear and out the other, you know, but I don't. So I hear everything you say. Uh, I take everything to heart. And uh, I try to do the best to, uh, you know, make you proud at the end of the day. Um, you know, you, you coach every sport, you know, basketball, football, baseball. He's been doing it for 35 plus years. Um, you know, I went out and played football because he wanted to make me tough. You know, he thought, you know, you go out and play football, you get tough, you, you know, you build some muscle, you know, you, you, you get discipline, that toughness, that raw toughness by playing football. And um, I did that on the youth level. And, you know, it, it, was, it was fun because, you know, I'm not really gifted in the, the height section, you know, a little short. So, you know, but I was a quarterback and... He, uh, uh, when I got up to, he brought me up to his level, uh, which was the, the big guys. And, uh, you know, the first day, he puts me against the biggest guy on the team. And, uh, and this guy's name is Quentin. He went on to play in, in the NFL. And I said, what are you doing? You know, are you serious? I got a baseball career, and you want to put me up against this rhinoceros? And this is not right, but you know, obviously I did a somersault after I went, you know, you know, they do drills. I did a somersault the first time. He made me do it again. I figured I better, you know, step it up or it's going to be a long day. So, you know, it, he ended up, you know, if your dad's the coach, you think you're going to be the star player. No, this guy, he's fair. He, he put me in center, you know, look at me. He put me in center. And I was the backup quarterback. So we went on to win the championship, and I was the center. I mean, man, did that build toughness. Oh, yeah. uh, you, know, and, you know, just my dad's, his nature, his passion, it all rubbed off. And, uh, you know, he always put in extra work with me. You know, he threw BP when the net didn't go all the way down to the ground. And I, I know I, I drilled you a couple times. It was all it was all for good, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know he wanted me to play football in high school, and I said no way. He said yes way, and I said no, I'm not going to play. And he said, you know, you're going to do it. You need to get tough, and I I, I didn't do it. I, I held strong, and I told him, you know what? I want to play baseball. This is my dream. I don't want to risk it. I mean, these guys are huge. If, you know, these these nose tackles. You know, one of them land on you, you're not going to breathe for a couple of weeks. So I told him, you know, I'll go ahead and play baseball. So, uh, Bob, I thank you for everything. You know, I stand up here today, and uh, you have everything to do with that. So, thank you so much. My mom is here, too. And Lee, stand up and wave to everyone. She's been there every step of the way. So many sacrifices that they have to make for me, that they had to make for me during those years. I mean, all the traveling, all the sitting out in the heat and the and sweating and the putting the big coolers together and dealing with my 0 for 4s or my 0 for 15s and have to dig in. Dealing with me on 0 for 15 is not pretty. And uh, they did it, and, uh, you know, I appreciate it. Um, here also with me, I want to also say thank you. My uncle is here. Could you please stand up and wait to everyone? My yeah, he's a big time football player, as you can see. And you saw my dad stand up, so I don't know what happened here. I don't know, I mean, share the vegetables, something. Who knows where I'd be right now? Dad! Uh, and my Uncle Ray, you can call him any time of the night, you know, and he's always.
always there. I mean, he's a guy you talk to, you talk to and he's just so articulate about everything, you know, and he, you know, we always talked about my passion, my goals. We always put it in perspective. We always talked about, okay, what's next? Okay, what's your plan B? All right, how's plan A? And at the end of the night, you know, we always ended on a good note. Every phone call, you know, he's, so how are you doing with the ladies? All right. Yeah. All right. You know, how are you treating them? I hope you're treating them right. You know, remember, you got Miller in your last name, so do it the right way. So, Uncle Ray, I appreciate everything. You've always been there, no matter what, you know. I can always call you, and you were always there, and I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Also, here is my godmother, and she's got, you know, the camera rolling here, but you still have to stand up multitask. Okay, okay. And, and wave to everyone. Hello. And uh, my godmother is the best godmother that any human being could ever wish, dream, or want. I mean, she is always there. From day one, she has always been there. And, uh, you know, I could call her anytime. She does anything for me. I mean, she... She tells stories. When I go back and I see her sometimes, she likes to tell stories. And, and you know, she says, oh, you couldn't catch. I'm like, wow, you're a Hall of Famer, but you couldn't catch when you were tied to a duck. You couldn't catch. And, I, you know, well, I can catch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> uh, she used to bully me around. She says, oh, you're a little scary kid. You're a little scary. You know, she used to throw me off the bed with a pillow. She says, she says I used to say, I'm going to go tell on you. You know, and I never told. She said, who are you going to tell? Well, Pops, I mean, you're here now. She did it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I want to I wanna talk about a special family uh, dear, dear to me, uh, the Proctor family. Could you guys please stand up, Chris and Julie Proctor. All right. My name is Santa Barbara, and, uh, you know, and they were my host family the first year that they uh, were going to, you know, carry a Forrester player. And, uh, you know, I walk in, they have two big dogs, and, uh, you know, I love dogs, but they were big. Uh, <laughs> I had to, you know, get uh, accustomed to that, but uh, and I didn't like spiders. And if you know where they live in Hope Ranch, there's tons of spiders. <laughs> so they had me out in the backyard, right in the middle of the spiders. And uh, I, I came inside and had to change the library into my room, because thank you for that, by the way. I took over, I took over your library. You had great books in there, but I had to get away from the spiders. Yeah, I couldn't do it. Um, but... Th Thank you guys. Um, you know, I, every day there was a huge meal. It, it's something different every day. Any any player could dream of. You know, I, I mean, it prepared me. I mean, that's part of preparation. Is you know, before you leave home to have a good meal, or after the game and have a great meal. You guys went the extra mile to make sure that I was having the best experience possible. And now my home is in Santa Barbara. You know, I can't wow. get away from you guys, you know. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys for everything. You know, your three boys, I felt like a brother to them, and I still am. You know, like a big brother, uh, Will, Connor, Duncan. Those guys are off to college now. They're growing up. They're driving. Man, I'm just, I'm getting old. But, you know, thank you guys so much for everything. <laughs> uh, you know, I came to the Foresters, and, uh, you know, from... You know, two years at Fresno State, and, uh, you know, things were kind of, you know, I uh, lost my confidence a little bit, and I got there with Bill Pintard, and, you know, he, you know, there was one game, and I came off, and he says, he says, Andre, uh, you know, uh, you got to get together. I said, Pinter, you know what? I don't want to hurt the team. Uh, I don't want to hurt the team, and I want you to take me out. He goes, are you kidding me? I turn right back around, and you go out there. You're going to be my second baseman. And that's exactly what I did, and I never left. So thank you so much, Pinner, for having that confidence in me, and uh, I'll never forget that. Thank you so much. Uh, I just want to say a few more thank yous. And, uh, you know, Hector Estrella was my roommate with the Proctors, and he's a friend today and a best friend, and, uh, you know, he, he, he holds the all-time uh, hit, uh, hits record with the Foresters, and, you know, he's a dear friend of mine, and he, he leveled me because I'm an intense guy, and I, I couldn't. You know, I go for four, man, and it's, I can't wait to get back out to the field. But Hector Estrella was that guy. He went to SC. You know, he was drafted with me, with, uh, played with the Angels together, my roommate. He leveled me. I mean, that kid, he was a rock. I mean, he, he'd go for four. It was like he went four for four. Uh, you know, he just had such a positive attitude. And, you know, at that point, you know, with Pinnard's coaching and with Hector's, you know, friendship, 
you know, I started to realize that the only way to be successful with this game is if you learn how to deal with failures. And, you know, you, you don't really get anywhere. You don't become the best without failing or knowing how to deal with failure. And that's what I learned here at the Forsters. And uh, it has a lot to do with Bill Pintard and his coaching staff. And I have to thank them for everything they've done with me. Um, as a Forester, they've allowed me to come back to the Foresters and get back. And uh, Pintard's always been there. He's a father to me. He's a coach to me. Uh, he's a leader. Uh, he's everything, all of the above. And, uh, you know, when we talk on the phone, I just know that Pintard, you're, you're just special. You're special, and words cannot describe. And uh, I thank you for everything. We're champions together. I remember butting heads with you after every championship win. And, uh, and it hurt, but you know, I, got, I got over that quickly. Yeah. But to all my teammates, thank you to the Garzas, the Matt Garzas, and uh, you know, the Doug Fisters that I had an opportunity to play with. Um, you know, those guys, you know, they played at the top level, and that just raised my game to another level, and can't thank them enough. So, you know, I just want to sum it up, um, you know, by saying, you know, the championship runs, you know, you don't. You don't win a championship every day, and you have to really appreciate the opportunities you get. And I had the opportunity to win a World Series as a scout with the St. Louis Cardinals, and uh, you know, a couple with the Foresters, and come back and get back, and won a minor league World Series with the Angels for the time I was there. So there's nothing like winning the big one. And it started here with the Foresters and Bill Pintard. So um, you know, uh, I'm going to be here in Santa Barbara. You know, my playing career uh, was is over, and uh, but I want to, you know, pay it forward and get back to the community, the Hugs for Cubs. And uh, I'm, I was determined on the field, and now I'm retired, and uh, I'm outside the lines. But I'm still determined to get back to the Santa Barbara Foresters, Foresters to the game of baseball, this great game. And uh, that's what I'll do now as a Hall of Famer. God bless you all. Thank all right. you.